following video contains step-by-step -step instructions on how to maintenance the 2.5 through 4 inch Derringer 40 Reduced Pressure Assembly Backflow Preventer. These are the tools required. Close the number 2 shutoff valve. Close the number 1 shutoff valve. Open test cock number four. Open test cock number three. Open test cock number two. Do not open test cock number one. When a reduced pressure valve is leaking from the relief valve, the first check may be fouled or damaged. Make sure the first check is functioning properly before assuming there is a problem with the relief valve. If the first check is functioning properly, we recommend using a toothbrush to gently brush away any debris from the valve piston and seat. This should return the relief valve to working properly without having to disassemble the relief valve. If damage to the relief valve has been found, please take the following steps to remove and repair the damaged relief valve. Using an adjustable wrench, disconnect the relief valve sensing line. Using a box wrench, loosen the relief valve mounting bolt on both sides of the body. Remove the relief valve o-ring. Using a socket wrench, disconnect the relief valve cover. Remove the relief valve diaphragm. Remove the C-clip. Use a flathead screwdriver if necessary. Remove the relief valve piston. Remove the relief valve spring. Check the spring for damage. Check the rubber seal on the relief valve piston assembly for damage and debris. Check the relief valve seat for damage. Check the relief valve diaphragm for damage or debris. Replace the diaphragm if necessary. Gently push down on the embossed center so that the diaphragm collapses into itself. Reinstall the relief valve piston into the diaphragm. Make sure the diaphragm's embossed center is inserted into the piston groove. Place the spring into the relief valve body. Install the piston assembly into the relief valve body. Make sure the piston assembly lines up to penetrate the hole on the top side of the relief valve. When reinstalling the piston assembly, make sure the relief valve spring is centered in the relief valve body. Reinstall the C-clip. Reinstall the relief valve cover. Use a socket wrench to tighten the relief valve cover bolt. Examine the relief valve o-ring for damage. Replace the o-ring if necessary. Install the relief valve o-ring into the groove on the relief valve. Using a box wrench, reattach the relief valve to the valve body. Using an adjustable wrench, reinstall the relief valve sensing line to the valve body. To remove the access cover, use a combo wrench to remove the six cover bolts. Make sure to keep the tapered washers with the access cover bolts. Remove the valve access cover. To remove the first check, loosen the check retaining bolt located on both sides of the body until flush with the inside of the valve. Remove the first check from the valve body. Loosen the tower screws with a Phillips head screwdriver. Separate the tower assembly from the seat. 
If debris is found on the first check seal disc, the check may just be fouled. The debris can be cleaned off to make the check seal properly without having to replace the check seal disc. Use a rag and some water to clean the debris off of the check seal disc. Examine the seat for any debris or damage. Examine the seat o-ring for damage and debris. Replace the seat o-ring if necessary. Examine the tower screw o-rings for damage. Replace the o-ring if necessary. Once the debris has been cleared from the check disc and no damage is present, the check can be reassembled and reinstalled into the valve body for testing. If damage to the check disc has been found, please take the following steps to remove and replace the damaged check disc. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove the seal disc retaining screws. Remove the seal disc retainer to expose the disc. Remove the seal disc. Install the new seal disc and make sure it is completely flat inside the check cavity. Reinstall the seal disc retainer. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, reinstall the seal disc retainer screws. The Derringer 40 and 50 first check is a true poppet check. The check orientation is not important when reattaching the check assembly to the first check seat. Reattach the tower assembly to the first check seat. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, re-tighten the tower screws. To remove the second check, loosen the check retaining bolts located on both sides of the body until flush with the inside of the valve. Use a flathead screwdriver to gently remove the second check from the body. Loosen the tower screws with a Phillips head screwdriver. Separate the tower assembly from the seat. If debris is found on the second check seal disc, the check may just be fouled. The debris can be cleaned off to make the check seal properly without having to replace the check seal disc. Use a rag and some water to clean the debris off of the check seal disc. Examine the seat for any debris or damage. Examine the seat o-ring for damage and debris. Replace the seat o-ring if necessary. Once the debris has been cleared from the check disc and no damage is present, the check can be reassembled and reinstalled into the valve body for testing. If damage to the check disc has been found, please take the following steps to remove and replace the damaged check disc. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove the seal disc retaining screws. Remove the seal disc retainer to expose the disc. Remove the seal disc. Install the new seal disc and make sure it is completely flat inside the check cavity. Reinstall the seal disc retainer. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, reinstall the seal disc retainer screws. Reattach the tower assembly to the second check seat. Make sure the tower assembly is in the proper orientation before tightening down the tower screws. Make sure the check seat protrusions are at the top side of the check. Make sure the check spring arms and the tower bosses on the tower assembly are facing downwards to allow the check to swing open upwards during operation. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, re-tighten the tower screws. Reinstall the second check into the valve body. Make sure the O-ring seals properly against the surface. Retighten the second check retaining bolts on both sides of the body. Make sure the second check retaining bolts don't bind against the check. Reinstall the first check into the valve body. Make sure the O-ring seals properly against the surface. Retighten the first check retaining bolts on both sides of the body. Make sure the first check retaining bolts don't bind against the check. 
Examine the access cover O-ring for damage or debris. Replace the O-ring if necessary. Place the access cover onto the valve body. Install the tapered washers onto the access cover bolts. When reinstalling the access cover bolts, engage all six bolts one thread. Hand tighten all six cover bolts. Using a combo wrench, tighten the two center bolts. Tighten down the four remaining bolts. Slightly open the number one shutoff valve. Close the number two test cock. Close the number three test cock. Close the number four test cock. Fully open the number one shutoff valve. Perform a test on the backflip preventer according to your local testing regulations to ensure the check valves and relief valves have been repaired properly. Fully open the number two shutoff valve. For more information about the Derringer product line, further technical support, or to download a printed copy of these instructions, please visit our website at backflowdirect.com.